Hello guys, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another walk around. This time I'm joined by the new Fiat 500 Hybrid. So as always, I will take you around the car, talk you through this specification and give you my first impressions. If you happen to be new to my channel, firstly, welcome, hello, thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron. Now, if you haven't seen one of these videos before, there'll be no driving in this video. It's just purely a static guided tour of the vehicle. If you do want to see driving impressions, that video will come in a few weeks time. The new Fiat 500 is available in six trim levels. The starting price of the base model is uh, £13,405 and the range topping version, which is the Sport, is £16,635. The car you see before you is the lounge version, which you can't actually buy anymore. That was replaced by the Connect version. Essentially, this is one up from the base model, and this car had a starting price of £14,750, but the car you see before you does have a few options, so it is £16,350. In regard to the Connect version that has replaced the lounge, that has a starting price of £15,135. This <clears throat> excuse me the specification is very similar but i do believe the connect does give you one or two extra features you can also have this as a 500c which is the uh, cabriolet version but in order to do so you you will be required to pay an additional 200 uh, sorry not 200 sorry 2650 pounds standard features i've got 15 inch alloy wheels led daytime running lights Nice chrome detailing. Uh, if I take you to the rear, you will see I've got rear parking sensors. There we go. You've got the hybrid badge as well, which should really say hybrid-ish because, yes, like I say, this isn't a proper hybrid. Actually, speaking of which, I haven't gone through the, um, the fuel economy, which is going to be very important for many of you watching. So on a combined run, Fiat states that you can achieve up to 53.3 mpg and in regard to emissions, this emits 119, so that's 119, 119 grams per kilometre, meaning for the first year of VED, you will be required to pay uh, 180 pounds. Compared to the old 1.2 litre petrol, this emits up to 30% less. So it is a greener car. Let me take you inside. Now, although this is technically a new car, this is quite an old design. Um, if you are a Car Obsession OG, you may remember that the first car I properly tested on Car Obsession was a 500. And the interior, compared to that car, is virtually the same. Bearing in mind, I tested that about five years ago, so quite a long time. If I actually take you around the passenger side, so I can give you a better look at the dash and the center console, you will see it is starting to look rather dated. If I take you off my little uh, tripod. Yes, um, these buttons down here, they look very old and tired and just dated. So I think it was about time that the 500 was kind of brought into the modern day. And of course, Fiat has done that with the new model, which is electric only. But Fiat still offers this, the hybrid version, just in case you're not quite ready to go fully electric. This car, as an option, does have uh, climate control. Normally, you would get air conditioning as standard. I've also got TomTom Tom navigation. That is another option. I've got um, rain sensors. So I've got uh, automatic wipers, basically. So again, that is an optional extra. I think I do have another option, which I may need to check. But yes, the glass roof is standard which I think is pretty good. It doesn't open, it's a, it is a fixed glass roof, but it helps to bring some natural light into this rather small cabin. Although one thing I will say is that on a hot day, this does um, create a greenhouse effect and it does get very warm in here. You do have a blind, which you can literally just pull across like so, but in my experience, that doesn't really help much. Let me fire up the ignition. The key is in my pocket. Mm -mm. Just bear with me whilst I faff about. Uh, 
So in case I haven't said already, this touchscreen is uh, seven inches in size. Get a little loading motif with, <coughs> excuse me, with the um, Hybrid X. As I've said um, on other Fiat models, the touchscreen is quite slow. I like the design of it. It looks quite nice, quite vivid. Not the crispest display, but it's nice enough to look at. But yes, as you can see, it's quite sluggish. Almost as sluggish as the engine in which uh, this car is powered by. Now, I promise you, I have not slowed that footage down. That is real time. Yes, it is quite slow. So let me just make sure the volume's all the way down. So of course you've got DAB radio, Bluetooth. I don't know why it's set to Radio 4. It's got the Archers. I didn't, I didn't even know that was still made. Uh, yes, you've got DAB radio, Bluetooth, smartphone connectivity. So you can plug in your Apple via Apple CarPlay or your Android phone via um, Android Auto. And yes, navigation is an optional extra. As I mentioned, you've got rear parking sensors as well. In regard to practicality, let me actually jump into the driver's side. So bear with me. Ah, into the driver's seat. I do have a complaint about the driver's seat, but I will come back to that uh, in a bit. So the door bins aren't the largest. They are quite long. However, once the door is closed, you can only really use half of it. And this was quite a large complaint I made when I drove the Abarth 595 a few years ago. Because you can't quite get your, your hand in there. It's just, ah, ah, just ah, yeah. In my opinion, it is a really silly design. Because it means that once the door is closed, because you've got this, um, this moulding on the door card, you can only really access half of the door card, which I think is quite silly. Sorry, half of the door bin, not door card, sorry. Uh, we do have a little slot here. You can pop one or two smaller items. Another small slot here where perhaps you can pop some chewing gum. Two cup holders in the middle, a slot which I like to stand my smartphone into when I've got it connected to the connectivity because there's nowhere else to really put it. You could maybe put it in there, but then when you put the handbrake down, it's going to be in the way. Two cup holders for... Uh, I'd say the rear passengers and you do get a glove box which offers a decent enough amount of space. Getting a, a good driving setup is going to be quite tricky particularly if you are tall like me. I'm six foot two. The steering wheel as you would expect for a car of this price adjusts for rake and that is it and in all honesty the the level of adjustment isn't large so even for me when I've got the steering wheel set to its highest, the bottom of the steering wheel is quite close to my thighs and my knees. Now, one solution would be to pop my seat back, but if I were to do that, I can't reach the steering wheel. And in fact, my seat is actually currently a bit too far back. So if I were to be a bit more, actually probably a bit more, just, sorry, I'm just faffing about with my driving position. Um, so if I were to be a bit more natural for my driving setup, which is probably more about there as you can see they are yeah the the bottom of this uh, steering wheel is very close to my legs which is annoying the other complaint i've got with the seat and it's the, the same complaint i've had with every fiat 500 or a bath is the seat itself it's got quite a thick base so you sit quite high up for such a small car it feels like you're sat in the car so it feels like you're sat on the car, not in it. Um, I've also been testing the Say It's Me Electric this week. And when I've, whenever I've got out of this car into the Me Electric, um, I always fall into the Me because the seating position is uh, considerably lower. Of course, you do get rear seats, but they are only really for children or small adults. I would get into... You know what? I'm game. Let me try and try to squeeze myself in the back. You may have spotted, you've got isofix points. So for me to clamber into the back isn't ideal. So yes, as you can imagine, for someone of my height, the rear space is, um, yeah, it's almost non-existent. Same goes for the headroom. So as you can see, I'm all kind of hunched over. Apologies, the lighting is awful. It is a bit dark in the back. Um, yeah, so 
I'm sure this goes without saying, the back of the Fiat 500 is not for properly sized adults. That's no, that's, that's, I'm not trying to offend anyone who isn't a properly sized adult, by the way. I'm just saying that really it's the back of the 500 is for children or smaller adults. If you're blessed with height like me, no. Let me take you outside of the car and I can squeeze my way out of the rear. Oh, God. Now, as you would, would expect, the boot isn't particularly large. As always, it's, it's got all of my filming crap in there, but I will cut to a clip where the boot is empty. Of course, as you would expect, the boot isn't particularly big. It offers 185 litres, which is, uh, yes, pretty minuscule. Uh, if you're looking for a weekend away, this is not the car for you. Now, you can, of course, fold down the rear seats to give you extra space, but a van, this is not. But, of course, you already know that. You don't need me to tell you that. There we go. In case you wanted to have a look at the engine, I can quickly, quickly well, I'll say quickly, I can show you under the bonnet. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention, you've got two USB ports and a 12 volt socket. I forgot to mention that earlier. Apologies for the wind noise. It is a bit breezy on the south coast. A bit fiddly to do with one hand. There we go, I got there eventually. So yeah, there we go. That is the uh, one liter Firefly engine as it is referred to by Fiat. Yeah, the engine, it's got enough performance, but yes, uh, this is best really for the city. One thing that does, in, does intrigue me, sorry, does intrigue me, I should say, not intrigue. Uh, one thing I do find a bit unusual is bearing in mind this car's got as much power as a food blender, it has actually got six gears in its transmission. I think this is, well, I could be mistaken, but this is the first and only Fiat 500 I've driven that has got a six-speed manual. Quite unusual, if you ask me. But yes, I think that's pretty much most of the car covered. I must admit, I do really like this blue paintwork. It is called Epic Blue, and um, it's, it is actually very similar to my Mark I Mazda MX-5. Yeah, it is a really nice, really nice paintwork. This weather doesn't really do it much justice, but yeah, when the sun hits it, it is really nice. And I will give you one last look at the Fiat 500 Hybrid. There will, of course, be a proper driving review coming with the car, a proper in-depth review. So be sure to check it out. Until then, if you've got any questions or queries, feel free, pardon me, feel free to drop them in the comment section below and I will answer as quickly as I can and to the best of my ability. But yes, also let me know what you, what you guys think of this car. Personally, I think it is, uh, this is going to sound harsh. I do think this car is, is a bit of an afterthought, a case of, oh, well, this generation of um, 500 is coming to an end. What can we do with the ones left over? Oh, well, let's put a mild hybrid system in there just to please the, um, the, the Euro emissions and regulations and be done with it. Yeah, this car to me, it just feels, yeah, it, it feels like, like an afterthought, but that's my opinion. There will be some people that will disagree with me. Uh, but yes, I would like to say a big thank you to Fiat UK for loaning me this car for the week. And of course, I'd like to say a massive thank you for you guys, uh, you guys watching this video. I do hope you have enjoyed it or found it useful. If so, be sure to like, comment and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.